Trains are the best way to travel around Europe, and you're probably wondering whether having a URL pass is the best option. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about choosing the cheapest pass and anything else you've been wondering about the pass. The first thing you're going to need to do is plan what kind of trip you're going to be doing and where you want to go. If you want to plan with keeping train travel in mind, this map on Eurail.com will show you all the main train routes around Europe. I'll leave a link in the description so you can find this map. Also on the website, you're gonna be able to see all the passes available. So there are two categories, there's global passes and there's country passes. From what I can tell, the country passes might not be worth it since the prices are really high on them, but you can use the strategy I'll tell you about later on in this video to figure out if they actually are worth it. The global passes though are more likely to be worth your money. And with the pass, you're gonna be able to choose either first class or second class seats. And it's cheaper if you're under 27 or over 60. Well, this page will show you all the passes that are available. And when I did my Euro trip, I used the 15 days in two months pass, which was cheaper than buying individual tickets. And I ended up using all 15 days. Now comes the annoying part. So when you're using the pass, some trains are gonna require reservation. These are usually gonna be on high speed trains and overnight trains, but also a lot of popular journeys will have reservations. Seat reservations can usually be made on Eurail.com, but some need to be made in the country that you're traveling in. For trains in Spain and Portugal, you're gonna need to make reservations at the train station in either Spain or Portugal. The good thing is though, once you get into that country and you're planning on using a few trains within that country, you can make all your reservations at that one train station for all the trains you're gonna be traveling on in that country. There's a few other things that are really important to mention. Each reservation is gonna come differently. Some are emailed directly to you right after you get the reservation and you can just show them on your phone. Some you're gonna need to print out and some actually come in the mail. For the mailed ones, it might take over a month for them to arrive. So make sure you check which train reservations need to be mailed and make those reservations as soon as you can. We didn't know that and we made the reservations way too late. So we had to send it to one of our friends living in Europe and she just brought it to us on one of the days. Because if we sent them to our home, we wouldn't have gotten them in time. The price of reservations also varies based on the train. Some reservations are only 2 euros and some can go up to 40 euros. Really popular routes like London to Paris, Paris to Amsterdam, Berlin to Prague are all going to require reservations. But a great way to get around this is by taking regional trains, which are going to have a layover in another city. This way you don't need to pay a hefty reservation fee and you get to see another city. But at the same time, you're going to have to sacrifice some time. So just decide which one you value more and the decision is just going to change each time based on which city you're going to. This strategy is going to be really useful for figuring out your train times, how to get everywhere, and if it's cheaper to use the URL pass. On the URL website, you're going to go to plan your trip and find rail times. Then type in your journey and you'll see all the train times and the reservation prices. So for this London to Paris journey, you can see which trains are direct and which trains have connections. The time it leaves, the time it arrives, and the reservation price. This is also where you're gonna book your reservations. To figure out which is cheaper, you're gonna need to find the prices of trains without the pass as well. For this, you need to go on the Rail Europe website and find your journeys on there. This is for tomorrow and you can tell how expensive it is. If you don't get the pass, make sure you're buying these popular journeys as early as possible because as you can see that price was just outrageous. They come out 90 days in advance and I would get the tickets as soon as you figure out what your journey is. Back to using Rail Europe though. To compare them, you're gonna have to put the journeys you're gonna be doing on each website and see which one is cheaper. So for the URL pass, you're gonna add the initial price of the pass and the price for each seat reservation. Then for the tickets, you just need to add the price of each ticket. Then you're gonna have a chart like this and you're gonna be able to see which option is the cheapest. Knowing how to use your travel days will also be important. If you have the pass that's 15 days in two months, that gives you 15 travel days to use within the span of two months. One travel day is a span of 24 hours between zero o'clock, which is midnight, to 23.59, which is right at 11.59 before midnight. So basically one full calendar day. And you can get on as many trains as you want within this one travel day. And that works for night trains too. So if you were on a train during the day and then you're getting on a night train at 11.50, 
this is still gonna count as that same day that you took that train on. Even though if you're gonna be on that train for 10 hours and you're pretty much on the train for the whole next day, you got on the train at 11.50 on the day before, so it's gonna count only for that day before. And if you want to go crazy, you can basically just make one of your travel days starting in Paris and taking a night train to Milan and then taking a bunch of small trains that are gonna take you to Belgrade and then you can get on a night train from there that's gonna take you all the way to Athens. So you'll basically get from one side of the continent to the other one in just one travel day. I hope you don't actually do that, but if you do, that would make for a good vlog. The pass doesn't cover subway systems or local buses, which is a common misconception, so you will need to pay for those and you can't use the pass. But it does cover some ferries and you can see it on that map I talked about before that you can find on URL.com. Once you get the pass, you have to activate it within 11 months of the time you bought it. To activate it, you have to select the first travel day, which is gonna be the first day that you're gonna be using the pass. There's also a couple perks you get for using the pass. You get a lot of discounts on hotels, tours, luggage lockers, and also some places to eat. And also the ferry from Spain to Morocco is discounted. And you can find all the perks it gives on the app. Before I get into how to add everything using the app, if you have any other questions about trains, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll try to respond to each one of you. But if I can't get to you in time, you can also check out the community section on URL.com where there's an entire community to answer all questions about trains. So when using the app, there's five windows you can use. The first one is the planner window where you can find any train station you want to go from and look up any train station you're trying to go to and see what trains are leaving on that day. It's going to show you all the stops with all the times and exactly how you need to get to that destination. It's also going to show you if you need a seat reservation and how much it's going to cost. There's some filters you can do like no seat reservations and you can figure out that way how to get on without using a seat reservation. The next window is stations so you can type in any station you want and you look at the departure times at that station and it's going to show you all the destinations of the trains that are leaving at that time at that station and it also shows you how much the seat reservations cost for each train. The next window is the my trip window which is where you're going to find your pass. This is where you're going to add all your journeys and this is pretty much where you have your travel day. You can also view on the map all the destinations that you went to and you can see the statistics of all the countries you went to, how many kilometers you traveled, how many trains and how much time you spent on trains. So this is an important window. You can also click on these and it's going to show you the entire journey you're going to take. The next one is the my pass window and this is the one you're going to need to use to show your tickets. So you're just going to click on this show ticket part here and it's going to give you the QR code and it pretty much gives all the info like your ID number, your name and the train you're on if you're on the right train. So they're just going to scan the ticket to make sure it works. And this last one is the more sections. So this one, you can also book seat reservations. You can see all the discounts that I was talking about that you have with the pass. You can also look at some info for some transit within the countries. This is another way to get to that community tab I was talking about. And this, there's also somewhere about common questions. But that's basically everything you need to know about using the app. Now that you know how to use URL, you'll need to know how to save on all other expenses. Watch this video here to know everything you need to know about saving money while traveling Europe. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe because it really helps me out a lot. And I'll see you again in the next one.